Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 158 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is a fish that I had never heard about but was requested by a community member. Um, it's a really neat fish and I hope you enjoy learning about this fish as much as I did. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The Japanese Angel Shark. The Japanese Angel Shark. Before I get too far in the video, I want to give a special shout out to this Andy Merch person. Um, we've featured some of his uh, pictures before. And it turns out that this person can, he just takes pictures of all the sharks and rays. This man can take some of the best pictures, man or woman, takes some of the best pictures um, in the world. And wow, really, really cool. Anyway, so the Japanese angel shark. <clears throat> now, the Japanese angel shark, or scientific name Squatina japonica, again, that's Squatina japonica, it is part of the family Squatinidae, which is the family of angel sharks. Now, the angel sharks have similar body shapes to something that we've talked about before, the guitar fish, but there are some differences that we'll go into in a little bit. In terms of where you're going to find the Japanese angel shark, it is found in the northwestern Pacific or, surprise, surprise, the coastlines of China, Japan, and Korea. Um, who would have guessed? Um, it does live on the continental shelves and usually is in the shallows. Um, think about two to three meters, um, six to nine feet. but they have been found as deep as 300 meters or 980 feet so they do have a very large range of where they can live in the water column but they are living um on the bottom of those it's found over sandy bottoms um as you can kind of see here um but they're very often close to rocky reefs um, if that made any sense at all. So they're finding these sandy patches, these sandy bottoms, but usually there's a very rocky reef nearby. And the reason for that will become apparent a little later on. Um, it is a large angel shark species, but it's a small shark in general as far as sharks go. Um, we'll grow to about one and a half meters, 4.9 feet. That seems to be about the max. There are reports out there of two to two and a half meters, which would be six to seven and a half feet, basically. But those are probably exaggerated. I feel a lot more confident stating that, hey, these fish are 1.5 meters at most. So five feet long. But as you can see, that's not, um, oops, that's not necessarily you know, a thick body. It's predominantly kind of slender. Now, the angel fish, angel sharks do have these very enlarged pectoral and pelvic fins. You can see here, just like the guitar fish and everything. But usually, if you remember when we talked about the guitar fish, those are usually connected and made the in a section, kind of like how stingrays, their pectoral fins are um, connected and making that circular disc. These are actually separated from the body and you can see these lobes right here. They're lobed out. You can even see right here that it has a lobe there. Um, oh, that's the front. So, so they do actually have fins, but it does have this um, flattened body shape. So, all of the angel sharks kind of look like the guitar fish, basically, where the anterior, the front part of the angel shark's body is really broad and flattened. But what's kind of different about the angel sharks as compared to most other sharks that have this sort of flattened anterior side, if you look at the tail here, you'll actually notice that the tail kind of has that, looks more like a normal shark. Um, it's kind of got that muscular, larger tail and backside as compared to some of the other ones like the rays and everything that have those fine whip-like tails. Um, it's 
relatively unique. Um, something about the Japanese angel shark, if you notice, the dorsal fins are set very far back on the tail. Very far back. Um, to the point that you, you'd almost kind of forget that these are dors dorsal fins. They do have spiracles, as most sharks do. They're these crescent-shaped spiracles right here. And they have these weird, large, boxy projections on the outer rim. On the inside of their rims. You can kind of see it here. I wonder if you definitely can't see it there. Eh, you can't really see it. You can kind of see the boxy projection right there. So this is a front view of it. Um, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see the you know, Those are not eyes. Don't forget. Those are the spiracles. Um, but they do have rows of small thorns. Which are the denticles. That are in between the snout um they're incredibly difficult to see and then they'll be along the midline of the back trust me they're there can't really see them though um but what's another interesting thing to note is i mean obviously they got oval eyes and they're set far bar that's not what it's if you notice they do have barbels um, each nostril does have two barbels, but what's interesting about that is that the outer barbel is much thinner, whereas the inner barbel, you can see right here, has this spoon-like tip. Predominantly, when you're talking about barbels in fish, they're either going to be long, fine whiskers, um, just like a long, thin, fleshy hair, or they'll have a lot of projections looking like, um looking like underground underwater plants lots of little leaf look looking things and things like that very rarely do you have something that spoon shape as a barbel which i thought was actually really interesting now color pattern if you haven't figured out by what is this oh here's another one here's they do have a relatively big mouth um color pattern they're modeled on the back with the the modeling towards the edges of the fins becoming much finer um much more dotted um a lot of a lot of smaller dots happening towards the edge of the fins versus the back which is much more broader broader spots and what that is is that allows them to camouflage themselves what these fish do is they lie buried on the bottom throughout the majority of the day and heck even at night these are more of a nocturnal species but they spend most of the time buried throughout the day and just kind of browse around at at night but these are really an ambush sort of predator mindset they're camouflaging themselves and then they will jump out and suck up you think you think of those shark videos where you can see like um things like the stonefish the wabagong really camouflaged and then sucking in a small fish that's swimming real close that's very similar to what this fish does it does have more of a hunting aspect especially at night but it's usually just kind of there and when it's ambushing stuff it's usually the small fish but when it is browsing around that's when it'll eat like crustaceans like small crabs and stuff um so the color pattern is all about camouflage and apparently um it's incredibly well does it incredibly well but that's why it lives in the sandy bottoms with the rocky reefs nearby so it, the sandy bottoms allow them to bury themselves very easily in camouflage but sandy bottoms predominant usually do not have as many fish species patrolling around on the sand so it stays close to those rocky reefs to get the fish that are making those forays into the sand to find small um like little bobbit worms and things like that to eat so it's kind of catching the fish as they're leaving the rocky reef and then it'll go browse around the rocky reef for the crustaceans like i was saying now the this fish is critically endangered by the iucn which is um we've talked about before and it's suspected that the population has declined by up to 50% or more. And that is because this fish, either intentionally or unintentionally, is very often caught in trawlers. Um, 
those big boats that are trawling these nets trying to catch all these fish they're very often caught but the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on um is kind of a unique one it's a little sadder um <clears throat> by the way it's not an interesting fact the meat is eaten so people will eat the meat of this fish um but that's not where i was going with that the interesting fact is what the Japanese and Asian cultures use the skin for. So I've used, I did a lot of stuff um, looking at this and the skin is used for so many different purposes. This skin is made into a kind of leather that's called shagreen, shagreen, and it's used in wood finishing. It's, uh, which I guess is like the finer polish of the wood, but it's also used in like um on the hilts of many um many uh, japanese swords like a uh, tantos i believe apparently it that's a lot of what it was used for and i guess it was uh used for there so it's not specifically this shark is used for tantos and only the shark but apparently shark skin is there but then i found something very interesting and it was in a report that was put out by IUCN and this was the real interesting fact apparently the skin of the Japanese angel shark and probably other sharks has been used to grind wasabi in a lot of Tokyo sushi restaurants and that was a very very interesting use of skin that I honestly would have never thought of um, I would have thought that it would have been much more of a sort of mortar and pestle sort of thing so yeah apparently the skin of the japanese angel shark has been used to grind wasabi in tokyo sushi restaurants just an interesting fact um unfortunately this fish is critically endangered and there are some issues with this fish but yeah just a real interesting fact fact sorry <clears throat> but regardless Thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If you'd like to support the channel, please, please click the link down below. It is by mo no means expected, but very much appreciated. Regardless, take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.